All right, welcome everybody. We're excited to have you on our webinar today. Uh, it's going to be some amazing content. Some of some of the fun stuff that I love to coach to, I love to teach to as uh, we go out to our clients and, and in our base camps as well. So good to have you guys on. Okay, perfect. You guys hear me. This is good. Uh, and you're interacting. This is, a, this is a great audience. Look at all these things coming in. Deborah, I see your comment. Thanks. I'm glad you can hear me. And we did get your question. So if any of you do have questions um, uh, regarding anything, today the topic is specifically on positioning. But as we're going through, if anything else comes up that you'd love to ask, feel free to write it in the question section. We'll make sure uh, that we get to those questions as well. So Deborah, again, thanks for pre-submitting that question, and we will get to it. Um, look, today our discussion is on positioning. We are, we're, I, again, like I mentioned, I love this topic. Uh, I, I, I think the power in positioning um, is, is phenomenal. Uh, and we're constantly positioning ourselves and we often don't realize it. We don't realize uh, that we're positioning. So we position ourselves poorly. Um, so, so that's what I'm excited to talk to you about today the power of positioning and establishing yourself as the expert. Uh, you hear all the time now in our in digital, uh, you, you know, from digital marketers, you know, that, you know, establishing them themselves as the thought leader. That's the idea behind positioning. How do you do that? How do you go about positioning yourself, your company, your product, um, all through the sales process? So we'll be touching on those pieces today. Um, and, and just to kind of kick that off, let's talk about uh, the principles and purposes of positioning. So the, the purposes of positioning is to stake a claim, establish your role, occupy a location, and tell the suspect what you do. The principles here are you got to claim it or you're never going to own it. If I'm contested, you win and state it often, the law of occupied space. So those are the principles of positioning. Now, if you think about this, you know, uh, if you think about positioning, you know, if I'm sitting in a chair occupying a space, uh, can anyone else occupy that same chair? No, not really, right? It'd be super awkward. Somebody else would be sitting on my lap if they tried to occupy that space. And that's the idea of positioning. Positioning is owning a space. Um, and if, if we own it and we're uncontested, then we win. We'll, we'll be known for that in the space. Um, if you think about a couple of uh, case studies, and we'll talk about some of these other pur pur purposes and principles here in just a second, but I, I want to really underscore this, this point. If you think about it, uh, most recently I've, I've been, you know, maybe watching a little too much TV, and I see this guy whose name is Paul. And for years, Paul walked around saying, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Right? And then we instantly, probably a lot of you, uh, that commercial came to mind. We, we think of Paul there talking about Verizon and how it's the best service out there. Well, Verizon was positioning themselves. They were occupying a space. They were claiming it. They stated it often in those commercials. They, they put them in different scenarios, you know, walking off a cliff or, you know, uh, in the city or wherever it was. They had them in different environments, staking the claim that they were the best service. And because of that, often came on, you know, they, they occupied that space and often was un, uncontested. In fact, Sprint has now, once, once Verizon dropped him, Sprint picked them up and grabbed them as quick, quick as quick as they could and started positioning. You know, that 1% I touted for years, um, it's not that big of a deal. It, it's, it's only 1%, right? So now all of a sudden Sprint is trying to say, yeah, they're, they occupy that space, but it's not that big of a deal. Come with price over, over that value. So isn't that interesting? Owning and occupying a space is important. And if we don't claim it, if we abandon it, just like Verizon abandoned Paul, someone else can pick that space up and try and occupy it. So it's really important. Um, uh, establishing your role, occupying a location, these are, are important aspects too. Um, and helping people understand what it is we do. Often that's hard. 
Um, and that's what positioning should do. So, so that's the idea of the pur purpose and principles of positioning. Now, let's look at some other pieces of this. One of, one of my favorite parts to be able to uh, kind of illustrate this is chess. For years, my dad taught me the principles of chess. And for decades, I've lost to him at chess. He's, he's pretty, pretty decent at chess. But if you think about positioning inside of chess, um, it, man, the principles here become, become really, really important. So let's, let's do this. I, I've got some people engaging. Hopefully people continue to keep engaging with us, but, but type in e either the chat or your question, type in what the most powerful piece on the chessboard is. What is, what do you believe the most powerful piece on the chessboard is? Let's see if we get some of these coming through. Okay, we've got some coming in. Oh, interesting. Julie says the knight. That's interesting. Mostly, and mo most everyone, everyone else, in fact, has said the queen. Uh, but, but yeah, the queen is the one I hear most often. So, Julie, my response would be, okay, if you think it's a knight, then what do you turn your pawn to when you get it to the other end? And most people respond to me, well, I turn into a queen. Well, why do you turn into the queen? Because the queen can go anywhere, right? The queen, the queen can move any direction as far as it wants, um, a, a, as long as it's it, as there's nothing uh, um, in front of it. So, for example, let's paint that picture out. If you if you uh, if you look, let me see if I can get my little laser pointer. If you look at where the queen starts, right? The queen always takes her, occupies her own location, right? So here's our queen, if we're white, right? And then here's the, our opponent's queen back here, right? So if we're playing white and uh, our, we go first and you, you, most of you have just told me the queen is the most powerful piece, where should I move her? Well, then the answer to that is you can't move her anywhere. She's stuck because everybody else around her is occupying space she has to stay here she can't move anywhere so um, isn't that interesting her relative position allows her um, or, or makes it so she cannot participate in the game at all at this point isn't that just interesting her relative position keeps her for her from participating in the game at this point Okay, let's illustrate this point a little bit more by using uh, Julie's favorite piece. Um, so we'll, we'll take uh, we'll take the um, knight, right? Here's our knight. The knight moves a little bit different; it moves in an L shape. So the knight can either go up two and over one, or it can go up two and over one this way, or it can go up one and over two. And on this side, it can't do anything, right? Because there's no space there but it can protect or and defend this pawn, right? And it can move up to here and it can move up to here. So it can attack, defend, or move up to three spots, okay? That's it, that's what the knight can do from this position, okay? So, and I think I had another piece to illustrate that because it's a little easier to illustrate on a flat board. So there's our, there's our knight, it can move in the L shape, so it, take, it can defend this spot, it can move or attack this spot, it can move or attack this spot. Now, here's the question, how many spots, if I move the knight into one of these four center squares, how many positions now can the knight either attack, move, or defend? And type that in, in it. I, I like this interaction. You guys are great. It's a great crowd today with us. How, how many spots do you think the knight can either attack or defend or move to um, in, in one of those four spots. So just take, put it in one, four, one of those four spots, how many pieces can it, places can it move to? Any answers? Spencer, you are exactly right. It is eight, nice work. Um, it is eight spots. So in fact, if we look to our next one, you can see those eight spots laid out. If we put it out in the four center squares, it can move to any of those eight spots. Now, just, just think about that for one minute. When our, when our knight 
was stuck on the sidelines, right? Stuck out here. It only had three spots it could either attack or move to. But now out in one of these four center squares, it has eight, two and a half times more powerful by its relative position. And we talk about this principle all the time in base camp. So I'm, I know some of you who are on here have heard this principle before, but, but, but really start to think about that. If we're positioning ourselves correctly, if we're positioning our company correctly, if we're positioning our products correctly, that positioning helps us to increase uh, the power by 250%. That, uh, that is just so amazing. Um, so amazing. Awesome. Uh, Spencer is kind of teasing with me. He says he's not a chess expert. He just, he just knows how to play it. Uh, that, that's great. I love that. Thanks, Spencer. Uh, look, so that's the idea behind the, the positioning here, um, that if we're taking it into consideration, if we're thinking about positioning, we can be more powerful in, in our language. We can be more powerful uh, with those that we communicate to, to help them make good decisions. And that's what sales is about. It's about presenting opportunities and helping people act on those opportunities so that they are able to put themselves in a better situation. That's the reality of what sales is. Um, so let's look at this from another couple uh, pieces as well. So if you if you think about it, if, you, if those of you who are clients in needs audit, we talk about this, uh, about this piece of uh, positioning. We talk about words in question order and how words influence thought. And then we give, we give three examples here. We give the first one of word choice. The words we choose matter. And it was done, there was a research study that was done where they, where they took a group of 90 people. They split that, well, they put all 90 people in a room. They showed them a video of a car accident. And, and then they took 30 people at a time. So they grouped that 90 into three different groups. They took the first group and they said this, how fast were those two cars going when they bumped into each other. They took a second group. How fast were those two cars going when they crashed into each other? They took the third group. How fast were those two cars going when they smashed into each other? And just that one word, bumped, crashed, smashed. In each group, the speeds increased from bump, bumped to crashed and from crashed to smashed because that word primes them. That word positioned what had happened in their mind. It changed it. So the words we use, it matters. It's a sense of priming and positioning. Here's another one, spreading activation. I have the INK in there, um, but, but the idea really, I'll be quick on, on spreading activation. The idea behind spreading activation is this, that, that if, uh, for example, uh, we've all done this. We've been reading in a book. And this used to happen all the time, especially when I was, um, in, you know, in high school. I'd be reading, and then all of a sudden, I would catch my thoughts on something totally else, usually my girlfriend, right? All right, so now I'm thinking about my girlfriend, and, and I don't even know why. And I realized, well, you know, something I read maybe cued an experience that we had had together, some, some fun thing that we had gone and done together. And now all of a sudden, that's why I'm thinking about, well, what are we going to do next? What's our next date going to be? Uh, where, where, where am I going to take her out next time? Um, so all of a sudden, that spreading activation took my mind somewhere else. It's why often we can be reading even a business book. And all of a sudden, we're thinking about our next vacation we're going to be on because something led to something, which led to something, and all of a sudden, our mind is gone. We could have turned 10 pages. And no, we read every single word on all of those 10 pages, but we can't remember what we read because our mind wasn't really there. Well, that's a sense of positioning as well. We need to be thinking about how are we cueing people? How are we uh, making sure to keep spreading activation from happening because of the way we're positioning things? Okay. The last one is question order. 
the, the idea behind question order is, is this, the, the order we ask the questions matters. And the research behind this was this question, put your business, American businessman hat on, okay? Uh, which isn't hard for all of us on, on the webinar. I mean, you, you all do business here in America. Um, and so, so as business people, as salespeople, our objective is to grow business and take market share. So as we grow business and we increase our market share, well, it means we need more territory. So the more territory we, meet, we need, well, international could become an option if our business gets big enough, right? So, so that's the idea uh, as, as this question was asked. Should the Japanese government have the right to determine how much business you do in Japan? 73% of people responded this way. No, I want to be able to do business everywhere. And the government there should not be able to restrict me, an American business owner, of how much business I can do there, okay? Unless they were asked this question first. Should the American government have the right to determine how much business Jap Japan businesses do in America. Well, now when question two is asked, should the Japanese government have the right to determine how much business you do in Japan? Well, turnabout is fair play. I think that's that's the the way it's said. So of course, uh, of course, they should have the right to determine how much business we do. Well, it's a totally different outcome. In fact, only 23% now said no the japanese government should not have the right to determine how much business i do in japan and 73 percent said yes they should just because of the way the question was ordered the positioning of the question completely changed the outcome look this is happening all the time whether you realize it's happening or not so you need to be thoughtful about the words you choose you need to be thoughtful about the questions that you ask so that you stay on topic. You need to you need to make sure that your question order is in line so that it's channeling them to what the topic is about. Now, this happened the other uh, a few months ago. I had um, a salesperson in my office. We got to talking. He was sharing about a vacation he just come back from, and which was a really cool vacation. And I was getting I was getting involved in that conversation. Well, at the very end of our time together, we scheduled an hour long conversation. At the very end of it, we both realized, man, we've we've shot 40 minutes on vacation and where we should be going. We only have now 20 minutes to accomplish what what this purpose of this meeting was really about. And in, in 20 minutes, we could only accomplish a very small amount because we had spent 40 minutes, the bulk of the time, talking about something that wasn't important, being involved in spreading activation, okay? So look, those principles are, are important to remember as you are engaging people with people, as you are thinking about how do you position yourself, how do you position your company, how do you position your product? Those pieces are important as you do that. That leads us to the next piece, okay? And the next piece here is um, about positioning plays, about positioning companies. Um, so there's a great book out there called Starting With Why, and it talks about why, why do you do what you do? And positioning is, is maybe a derivative of your why. It's how do you communicate your why to people? See, your why might not be uh, enough to be able to communicate. So for example, our why at Griffin Hill is to save and change lives. That's why we show up to the office every day because we know the content we bring helps to make better people. It helps to help you to achieve higher levels of success. That's why we do what we do. Now we do it through different ways. And so we have to position those ways. So here's our first, here's our, a good one for us, especially about what we're talking about today. Though we do more than this, if I'm positioning our integrity sales product, 
this first positioning play is a great positioning play for that. Griffin Hill helps companies take control of the sales process. See, that positioning is deep that, and, and, and dense. Think about those, those dense keywords. We take control of the sales process. It, it's not just, you know, on the side, here's what we do. We actually help you take control of the sales process. This works really good for salespeople. This works really good for sales managers. This works really good uh, for CROs or CSOs. Uh, uh, that it works good for VP of sales. Um, so that's a great positioning play because it's communicating to our prospects and suspects what it is we do. Here's another good one for a dairy company here in Utah. We deliver the best quality dairy products in the U.S. Now the re reality of this is it was a company called Winder Dairy. Winder Dairy typically is known for delivering milk. But think about this positioning play. If everybody knows them for milk, well, now if I'm positioning, hey, it's not just about milk, it's about all dairy products. Well, that broadens the scale of what they really deliver. So make sure your positioning play isn't so like num necessarily like number one, where it's so directed and so niche, unless you know the group you're speaking to is going to be directed and niche. But this would be a good broad one if you don't know exactly who your audience would be or if you're trying to evolve who you really are. Here's another one, the last one. Uh, we eliminate the headaches and red tape of being an employer. It's a great one for an HR company. We eliminate the headaches and red tape of being an employer. Think about the dense keywords in that. Eliminate. Uh, the headaches and red tape, the, the regulation, right? So, so HR professionals, when they hear that one, man, it really connects with them because they, that eliminate the headaches, they know the pain that it is. And if they're, if we're here to help and eliminate those headaches, man, that's a great, uh, a great prescription to the problem I'm having. And the red tape, man, it just it, it helps elevate the headaches that I have. So the positioning is, is really important for, uh, and there's three really good examples of positioning plays. Now, we would use these positioning plays in our first conversation. Um, at Griffin Hill, if you're a client, you'll know that as our case open. Um, if, if you're outside of Griffin Hill, you've probably heard of it as an elevator pitch. What are the first things you're going to say to somebody? And one of those first things should be, how are you positioning yourself and your company? And this is a, these are good ways to, posi to position the company. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take, I'm just going to be quiet for a second. And what I want you to do with, with that minute where I'm just going to be quiet is I want you to take that minute and start to think about your positioning play. What is your company about? How are you positioning it? You might want to start with your why. Why do I show up and do this every day? And with that why, how do I describe that in a way that resonates with people? Now remember, stake a claim, occupy a location, right? So that's exactly what these positioning plays examples do. They occupy a location. That first one, Griffin Hill occupies the location of the sales process. The second one, they occupy the location of the best quality dairy products in Utah. The last one, they occupy the location of eliminating headaches and red tape. Okay, so take just a minute and write some of those. And I see some coming through. That's great. If you get a minute, send it in through the through the question or, or comment place. Um, perfect. I'm, I'm seeing some good ones here. Spencer, I love the one that you just sent through. I make the world a better place by improving the way people interact with each other. That is some great positioning and definitely a strong, strong why. Um, nice work, Spencer. 
Here's one of the other things I like to do as, as I take my positioning plays. I like to keep them short and concise because in an elevator speech, you only have 30 seconds. And so we want to keep that quite, quite short. Um, at Griffin Hill, the whole case open or elevator speech, we give you 60 words. And positioning, we give you 12 words for that. So you'll notice if I count these, Griffin Hill, that's one word. So Griffin Hill, one, helps companies say control the sales process. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine words. We deliver the best quality dairy products. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And the last one, we eliminate the headaches and red tape of being an employer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. All under 12 words. Okay, so think about that principle um, as you are uh, crafting your positioning play. Um, so I, perfect, I see a couple other ones. There's one from, from RBM, Julie, nice, nice job. Uh, there, there's a great one. Debbie, you've got one in there too, awesome. Look, guys, some great positioning plays. Debbie, you've got, uh, that's a, let's see, perfect. Yeah, that, that's a, a good, short, concise one, too. So nice work, Debbie, on, on creating a short, uh, nice, concise one. Look, that those positioning plays are effective. Um, they'll help people make connections better to what you're doing and how they can see real benefits as well. So nice work, guys. With I'm impressed with our engagement today. Uh, nice work with um, the the creating good positioning plays. Okay, want to wrap up with a couple last pieces here. I already hit that. Um, I, I want to make sure that you know about some of the pieces that that we're offering. Um, I just mentioned about case open, and so I'm going to start with number three, and we'll work up the way back up here. Um, we've got a base camp coming up. It's this Friday, though, and it's all day. It's long and it's consuming, but the power of base camp is, is amazing. You'll come out of that not only with your elevator speech ready to go and, and your positioning locked in like we just talked about, but you, um, you'll come out with what is the whole sales process? What, how do I start it? Um, how do I make sure I'm understanding the right concepts uh, 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 and, and helping um, my prospects and suspects um, make connections of why my services are needed? And how do I present good solutions? And then how do I go on and, and uh, harvest referrals and keep my pipeline growing? So this last one, Basecamp, it's this Friday. Um, and it's all day. It goes from 8.30. We start sharp at 8.30, and we'll end about 4, maybe 4.30. Um, but that is a great piece. You can register for Basecamp for free. It's located here in Utah. It is on site. There's not like a webinar version of it. It's a $1,500 value per individual. Now, for the give, no more than two people per company. Um, but but make sure that you get scheduled for that. If in the comments section, our team has posted a link to that. If you want to get registered for Basecamp, do that right now. Don't wait. Get signed up for it. It's free. You're not even going to get charged anything. There's no credit card required. Uh, it's just sign up. Come get huge value for that day. The next one is come attend SmartCon. Uh, we're going to have great content just like we did today and like we have on our other webinars. So go to our smartcon.griffinhill.com, get signed up. We just, we, we changed a whole bunch of things. We, we knew we wanted to make sure that this got free to people. So we moved location. We knew that Salt Lake people, hey, coming down to Utah County. So we moved it up to Salt Lake uh, and we've shortened the time so you can get good content quickly. So make sure you go register for that. By doing all those things, uh, we just turned that to free. It used to, it used to be 130 bucks. At, for the last two years, it's been 130 bucks. We're assuming next year it's going to come back up. So make sure you get in and get registered also for uh, SmartCon. You can get registered by going to smartcon.rifnil.com. And the last thing is, look, if you found value in, in these webinars, what we hope 
is that that will spark in you a desire to improve in your personalized space. Now, we can help you do that. And, and we'll, we do that by first making sure we understand what it is you are trying to accomplish. And so that's why we offer a free consultation. If you're interested in a free consultation, shoot us an email. You can email me at Cameron B at GriffinHill.com, or you can email our support team at support at GriffinHill.com. Either way, we can get you scheduled for that free consultation. So those are the three, three, three things that we love to offer. Now I've got a whole bunch of questions. So I'm going to come over to those questions here. Um, let's see. Most of these are, are really good. Uh, perfect. All of those are great, uh, really good uh, position plates. So nice work on that. Okay, so Spencer, you're asking about uh, will we have base camp another time? I, I get that look. It's already almost Friday. I mean, we're we're pushing end of day Wednesday already. Days just seem to fly by. Um, we do this every three months. So Spencer, if you'll email us at support at griffinhill.com, we can inform you when that next one will be. And because you're on this webinar today, we'll make sure you get registered for that one for free. But yeah, you've got to be registered today. You've got um, you've got to be on the webinar to be live on the webinar to be able to get that offer. It's a huge fifteen hundred dollar uh, piece. So thank you, Spencer. A uh, really good question. Um, last piece. Uh, uh, again, if you want to sponsor, we've got some options. If you want to attend for free, uh, go do it. September twenty eighth is SmartCon, um, and then I'm going to come back and just leave it on this last piece while I'll answer any questions. So if you've got any other questions, feel free to submit those. The one that uh, I got earlier from Deborah, Deborah, thank you for, for asking this question. This is a perfect question, fits nicely into what we're talking about today. The question is this, will you address how to best engage our clients to refer their friends and family? What a great question. Uh, look, um, bit, you're more likely to close business if you you ask for in their referrals. Um, I last stats I heard, and it's been a while. It's like you know a referral is 80 80 percent more likely to close than if we're you know got somebody into our pipeline through cold calling. So that's not even then a then a contact from cold calling. That's they're in our pipeline. So, so referrals are key. And Deborah, this is a really good question. And it comes back to positioning. It, it, it's really true. Um, the way we position ourselves matters. And, and so Deborah, if, if you implement what we call the film and follow up play set, uh, that is, that's probably one of the most powerful play sets to be able to position yourself um, that you've offered value, that you've given value, and based on that, that you hold, that you want to grow your business, and that you've got some questions to ask to be able to harvest referrals. Um, so if you position yourself correctly through that process, then, then you'll see some really cool things. Let me see if I have, because if I have this other I'm going to stop sharing my screen real quick. I'm going to see if I've got another slide because um, because the way th this question is just really important. Okay, so that play set I mentioned to you, Deborah, it's called the film and follow up play set. And here I'll share my screen in two seconds with you. Okay, perfect. So you should be able to see uh, that play set now. Um, let me just walk through them all. So here, here they are. You've got your reframe. Your reframe is, here's everything that we've done up to this point. You've got uh, your reframe of case openings, audit, solution presentation. That's everything we've done. Then you're going to go into how did we fulfill promises? And this is where positioning comes in. The, the positioning here is so important because what I hear all the time is, uh, hey, what did you like? Or, or not, not even that. It's well, how you felt about what we brought to you. And oftentimes when people hear that, the positioning we're sending off is, hey, we're asking for helpful observations. And so they say, okay, let me tell you all the things I hated about it, X, Y, Z. And what we are really looking for is, no, we wanna know what did you like about it? 
because if you we want to hear those things that you like and be able to take that and then share that with other people. So the positioning is important here. Here's what I believe we've done, X, Y, Z. What have you liked best? Now, if they have, if you haven't fulfilled on anything, that's okay. Uh, what What do you like best about what I have been doing? Even though I haven't participated, here's what I do. What do you like best about those types of things? What do you like, like best about our engagement and, and my personality? Those pieces are important. And then the next piece is collect proofs, right? So if, if they say, oh, I like these things about it, well, may I share your experience with other people? So that positioning, even before we get to the who are your family and friends, if we can do those pieces, it helps position better. Now, the last piece here is harvest referrals. And this is when we transition from them to us. So now we, we start off saying, look, this is very helpful for me. Thank you for sharing the things that you've liked. From a selfish standpoint, I have a few more questions that will help me to grow my business. And now we need to be specific, okay? It, we can't ask the who do you know question, which all salespeople want us to want to ask, right? We've got to ask questions where names immediately come to mind. So here's some... Deborah, for your situation, these are going to be poor questions. But here's some example questions. Who are your top five clients in this market? Who do you sit by when you go to your chamber meetings? Who are the three people you've worked with and admired from pre previous jobs? And then how do we contact these people, right? Those are important pieces. But Deborah, for you, these questions might be, um, of your family members, who is it that, you know, you pick up the phone and you're on the phone with them at least once a week? Who are, who are the three people that on a monthly basis you're going to be touching base with? On your, when you go to your Instagram or your social networks, who are the three uh, people, uh, who are your three friends that you're going to make sure you go in and you're going to look at their feeds? Who are you going to keep tabs on? Those might be better questions for you, Deborah. But you can establish how many referrals you want to have coming out from that. So that would be my, my response back to you, Deborah. What a great question. I hope that helps. Um, let's see, a couple other things that we're getting. Uh, mo I don't see any other uh, deep questions here. Um, just, just things of, I love the collection steps in, in the sales process. Seems that, yes, it is. It is an ingenious way of gathering proofs and referrals. Uh, super powerful. Deborah, I'm glad that answered your question. Look, I'll hang on. We're there. We're to the end of our time. But make sure to do those couple things. Go use the links to go re register for SmartCon. Uh, it is free now. Uh, we, we, ju we just launched and changed the price. We were charging 130 bucks, but because of those changes, a location change, a shortened day, we're able now to offer that for free because we don't have overhead anymore. And then make sure if you are available to go get signed up for our base camp. Again, no more than two people per company, and you have to be on this webinar to get registered. But uh, thank you guys. So good. It's good to be with you. Base camp. Good question, Deborah. Base camps, it covers positioning like we just talked about. So, so let's think of it this way. It starts off and talks about how do you make the introduction for, for a sales call. That then it talks about after, after you've made the introduction, how do you make sure you understand the needs of that contact? After you've understood the needs, how do you present good solutions that will help uh, increase the odds of them saying yes and buying from you? And then it covers this last principle that we just talked about. How do you present to them that you offer them real substance and real value and harvest referrals. How do you collect referrals to keep growing your pipeline? So Deborah, that's exactly what we'll be covering in Basecamp. Really good question. Okay, I'll hang on for just a little bit more. Um, if you have any more questions, keep asking them. So basically Basecamp is your entire sales process in one day, correct? Spencer, that is exactly right. It is our full course. It, it is. I, um, it is all the content. This isn't a marketing gimmick. This isn't, you know, a, a way that we can, you know, 
get you in a room and close business. This is, hey, here's the process. Go implement it and go use it. So yeah, you're exactly right. It is sweet, Spencer. Um, okay, perfect. Any other questions? Feel free to answer them. I'll hang out. Good to be with you though. Thank you so much for being on the webinar today. Yeah, Spencer, yeah, refresher definitely won't hurt. Um, and it's quick too. You're right, it, a long time ago, we used to break it up over a few days, but yeah, it, it, will be, it will be good to have you at the next one for sure. So make sure to email us and we'll get you signed up for that one. Good, I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to head off. Good to be with you guys. If you have any more questions that I didn't get to or somehow I, a lot of comments came through, so I might have missed something, shoot us an email um, and I'll, I'll get those answered. Uh, but it's been awesome to be with you guys. Thank you so much for engaging uh, and, and just have a wonderful day, wonderful week, uh, and we'll see you on the next webinar.